Hey guys, Desolator Magic here. Sorry, a lot going on as usual. Doing a little bit better health wise, but uh, not great. But you know what's gonna make me feel all better? Mark Rosewater's recent uh, presentation at Comic Con. I said that with a straight face on the first take. So he put up this slide, apparently. I have not independently verified this. Um, so there you go, but this would be a lot of effort to fake this. Uh, Mara's visual teaser, eight images of eight upcoming products. All eight will be previewed in the next two weeks. Oh, by the way, they're going to preview like one plus years worth of roadmap stuff because they're already overdue for it at, what is it, Gen Con or whatever. So August 3rd is what I heard. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that because it is going to be like post-return to Aldrain, post-return to Ixalan. And by the way, I'm a little bit excited about the general vibe, art, and maybe story for uh, Caverns of Ixalan. Because Ixalan was pretty cool the first time around. So, let's just jump into it. Picture number one. Quite possibly the most confusing. Now, that's like weird skull imagery. Um, I don't know. I can't place this to anywhere. I mean, this could be Rakdos, which I doubt it. I mean, with like the flying bat with the weird tails, you know, we got them going on and then maybe he has some kind of weird grafted arm. I really hope they don't have the balls to go back to Ikoria. But based on what I'm seeing here, unless I'm missing something, that's probably the best guess. But this character could be from absolutely anywhere. So then we've got this, which, um, I mean, this could be Dominaria. This could be anywhere. It's humans riding horses chasing down some kind of, like, undead zombie goblins or something. I'm kind of getting Innistrad vibes from it, but I don't know. It's one of those where, like, you could guess, but it could be anywhere. The fog on the ground to the overall color scheme in the sky. And then the fact that those guys look undead or, like, some kind of ghouly thing. I don't know. I could see that he got the pitchforks and the, the general armament. But I mean, this could be Tarkir. They're riding horses. I don't know. I just realized these are out of order. So going back to picture number two, we have some lady and then a Hydra. All right. A jungle and ruins. And with her eyes, she might be a vampire. I'm going to say Ixlan. That architecture looks pretty Aztec. You know, I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine what else it would be, but it could be Ikoria. So going to number four, this is interesting. This looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong, although this is YouTube, it kind of goes without saying you're going to do it anyway. Uh, is that Calistria face paint? It, it's somewhere on Zendikar. I'm like pretty sure of that. Now, they didn't say nothing about Zendikar, but keep in mind this could be misleading. First of all, it could be just a coincidence. And they just painted the face the same way from the side and who knows. Um, two, people can, I think, just like travel between the bridges now. So you don't have to be a planeswalker to like travel outside your plane. So all these could mean next to nothing. This could be Drana herself. I don't know. But I mean, to me, like if you look up, um, especially Malakir Blood Priest, there's a good example. White face, red paint. So this has got to be a member of Malakir. It's just, where are they? And are we going back to Zendikar? And Drana herself has very similar face paint. Just saying. And she do be a big fan of the flamboyant capes. Now, number five is very interesting. It's just some dude with a camera, because I guess now cameras exist. It looks like he's wearing some kind of, like, it could be an Innistrad hat. It could just be, like, a Jungle Explorer hat. It almost looks like a bowler, but I don't know. My gut reaction was Indiana Jones vibes. So this could be, and if you look at the lens of his camera really close and enhanced it in Photoshop, which I, I did do, but I don't know. I didn't save it. it it's either some ruins... Or it's, like, something on Innistrad. Like, some kind of, like, church bell tower kind of thing. Really hard to see. But that does just immediately give me excellent vibes, so we'll see. Now, picture six. Here we go. <laughs> it's a six-headed goose. A goose hydra, or swan. I mean, the head looks goosey. I mean, how many gooses are there in fairy tales? You got, like, what is it, mother goose? You got the goose that laid the golden egg. Uh, this is obviously, obviously Eldrain. And obviously the spell is called the Goose is Lose. So next up in number seven, this one's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, you might think, oh, Eldraine, it's like a little d mouse dude with a cape and a sword. I mean, that's very, like, fairy-ish. And then that bug looks kind of, it's just Eldraine vibes. Even the plants, and then he got, you know, maybe the big bad wolf or whatever. I don't know. Kind of looks like a hellhound or something, but not quite. I don't know what his story is, but who knows. Pretty confident that's Eldraine, though, but you never know. 
And then the final picture, and this is where it gets interesting, because that just screams Innistrad. You got the undead, he's in some kind of carriage, he looks creepy, the hat style, everything about it matches up. I mean, lanterns, the building style in the background, but, I mean, maybe Rakdos? I don't know, it's hard to say. But I think we're going back to Innistrad because that sold really well for them last time. And by last time, I mean the time before last time. That two-parter, lie about everything, it's not really all cards put together, you know, oh, and then the art sucks, and then the black and white, which people didn't like. That was a, a catastrophe with, like, Crimson Vow and all that. The Werewolf deck was horribly overpowered for post-rotation. People are still playing it. It's, yeah, it was bad. But Shadows and Eldritch Moon, oh, yeah. Oh, they got some interest and money on that one. And these days, Watsi will quickly and desperately go to the money as early as they can possibly get there. So with another couple images looking in Estrati, I think it's safe to say that in early 2024, we're going to be there. And like I said, we'll see if that production's right in like, what, four or five days? So that was just another interesting little look at the future. Fun little teaser, I guess. It'd be a lot more fun if the state of the game wasn't complete crap. They completely destroyed and killed Standard. I mean, it's, the state of the game is in shambles. And at least people came around to my way of thinking for the last 11 or so years on this channel. That Watsi is going in a very bad, dangerous, power-creepy, greedy, stupid direction instead of long-term health of the game. And now that's been proven, and hooray, I was right. And now my channel's getting like one-third the views it used to. And so is every other Magic channel that isn't covering other TCGs. I, it's my opinion that they're still burning down this game completely. Just burning everybody out until it just fizzles. Because a correction would be expensive. They would need to piss everybody off, drive everybody out by rotating twice, ban like 30 cards, and then apologize and admit they were wrong, and then change staff. That is drastic. But a slow decline becomes a fast decline when you're a publicly owned company with stockholders because they can invest in another company that's not losing 2 3 4%. So why don't they just burn everybody out, make the numbers look really good for two years, and then in about the third year, everything crashes, and that's what's going to happen. That's why... Uh, I know a lot of people selling their collections. So the good news for you, unless you really like structured play and standard, uh, is you can draft whatever you want. I mean, the products are getting astronomical in price. That's so not entirely true, but uh, you want to play cube, you want to play commander, you want to play anything goes, you want to play like old school used to be standard, which is my friend's favorite uh, format, which is any deck that in its entirety used to be in standard. So you just dig out an old deck that you brought to FNM five years ago and play with it. Usually it's pretty balanced. Uh... Kind of. Depends if they're building with recent cards or not. So you can still have fun with Magic, and honestly, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Just by the singles, they're devaluing everything. And they're, they're printing like nine different showcase frames of everything, so every time a single comes out, buy the cheapest playable one. And then they've got reprint sets taking $50 cards and driving them down to 5 bucks. So it's like, it, there's always two sides to everything. There, there's the, oh look, it's a really valuable set, I'm gonna get my hands on it, open it, and then like keep the cards I want and sell the rest for a profit. You know, like BFZ was hot. Origins is pretty nuts. Almost all the master sets were pretty good eventually. But if you don't want to do that because it's a bit of a gamble and you just want the, the cards you want, then a set that completely bombs, cool. Buy the cards cheap on the aftermarket three weeks later. So you win either way as long as you don't care what you're playing. And that's that's why a lot of people are very angry right now because they really liked FNM standard, constructed, nice rotation, comfortable power level, and that just went out the window. They just ramped that to hell and they, they ruined it. Nobody plays it. They completely ruined it. And now the last ditch effort is keep people playing on Arena by preventing a rotation for another year. And then, I don't know if you guys heard, but Alchemy is rotating. What? That is not going to three years. And that's the higher powered format of standard. I don't get it. Well, they finally resorted. Uh, this is going to be a little MTG news at the end here, but uh, they resorted to um, running a free draft, a phantom draft of like uh, one of the best draftable sets really ever. Um, it was a little unbalanced, but everybody knew it. So it was like, it was really good matches. And I might be a little biased because I went 7 and 0, 7 and 1, and 7 and 2, almost back to back on a stream. Dominaria United, baby. You uh, pay the entrance fee of zero. <laughs> You can play as long as you want, and there's no amount of penalties that'll kick you out of the event. I think it ended, like, today or yesterday, so I should probably, you know, tell you that. But it looked pretty popular, and people were drafting, like, really wacky, fun stuff, and just, like, having fun. And I didn't care if I won or lost, because all I needed was, like, three wins, so who cares? And it was a fun set to draft, so if they just did that and, and did it constantly on really, really balanced, good draft sets, people would be like, oh, I can play Arena completely for free, and I love drafting. You know, that's better than MTGO, even. 
eventually a certain percentage would be like, I'm done with like the kitty free lane. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to go to the paid stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to try historic. I'm going to try brawl. And then people start spending money again. You got to have that draw right now. It is so ridiculously expensive for somebody brand new to the game to jump in. And as far as standard constructed, people are not just not going to, or they've already quit themselves, but they are embarrassed to teach somebody else the game right now. To look at the state of it and be like, yeah, sometimes you go up against this mono blue hottie gin where you can't do anything and you just lose, you just forfeit. And then somebody says, why the hell won't Wizards do anything about it? Oh, well, they decided to not piss off those people net decking that stupid pile of offensive crap that pisses everybody off. To, to cater to them, they're only going to ban stuff once a year because it's too disruptive to just get blindsided by it. To which the person would reply, nothing because they're already out the door. They already got up and left in the middle of your sentence. Or, what the hell, I'm going to go play a different game. There's a million other TCGs out there. They're out of their damn minds. Or when they just see the price tag of literally anything magic on the wall. So, uh... Also, I might make a video on this. I might not. I, I don't have a way to audit the numbers, so I don't like that. But, like... They're estimating upwards of, like, 75% of all products sold in the last year in magic were on Amazon. So direct to wizards. I wonder why the stores are going out of business. Hmm. So I wanted to just set up all that, you know, so when I say like, I'm excited about this, or this upcoming set might be kind of neat. Yeah. With a little caveat of, holy crap, the game is in shambles. It's probably not even going to exist in five years. So you can only be so excited about the upcoming stuff in magic. There's barely a playable format and the popular playable formats are the don't bother me. We're going to police it our damn selves in my own play group. Because we can manage it better than WotC, which is just sad. They, they just need to go more hands-on and stop doing this last-ditch effort, burn-it-down crap. That's, it's just not good. So I wish I had better news, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time.